I wrote a book to empower women and dedicated it to my daughter. When my son got old enough to read, he read that dedication and was like, Mom, what about me? It's funny when you become a parent, there's so many things that come up that you don't really anticipate. The first one was the baby weight. I just could not get it off. So I did what any rational human being would do, and I signed up for a weight loss reality TV show. <laughs> it was amazing. There was a bunch of teams, and they were all competing against each other to lose the most weight over the course of a month. Each team had one woman, one man, and a trainer. My trainer did a really cool combination of soccer and dance, two of my favorite things, and so I was super excited. We started training and one day I showed up and my teammate was like, I'm so pumped. I've been weighing myself every day. And I was like, oh, I haven't weighed myself at all. Am I being a slacker? And my trainer was like, no, that's actually really good because stress affects men and women very differently. I was like, tell me more. He said, for a man, when he weighs himself, those results will give him information that make him want to work harder. But for a woman, when she sees those results, if the results aren't positive, it will stress her out and her body will begin to secrete cortisol, which then creates belly fat. So just keep doing what you're doing. And I was like, all right then. So we did two a days, we ate a meal plan and it was a whole vibe. At the end, after working out for like a whole month, like a beast, I ended up losing 20 pounds, our team won and we each got $5,000. <laughs> it was such a beautiful win and honestly one that I needed really badly at that point because I was undiagnosed with postpartum depression. Four weeks after giving birth, I was fully having suicidal thoughts. I didn't really know what was going on and so I tried to positive talk myself out of it. One day I'd be feeling a little better so I think, okay, we're gonna be okay. And then the next day I'd be super weepy out of nowhere, honestly, about nothing. And then the next day I'd be crazy irritable and really angry behind the wheel on, on the road. And so I just kept struggling like this for nine months. I'm so grateful for my partner because he finally sat me down intervention style and was like, sweetie, I think something else is going on. I was honestly relieved when I finally got the diagnosis because it gave me permission to finally ask for support. So I got some support and I sort of slowly learned how to take better care of myself. And as I started to come out of the fog, I just remember thinking, whoa, is this what women have been doing since the beginning of time to bring life into this life? It just didn't really look the same as all of the very happy pictures I was seeing online and on social media. It was just so much harder than I thought it would be. The sleepless nights, the pain of labor, the postpartum phase, I just couldn't believe it. And one day, I just remember having this thought, I can't believe that everyone was born of a woman, and yet we all go on to live in a society that oppresses the very women who gave us life. If society made any sense at all, it would be edifying women and thanking them for the incredible service they do to forward the human race. Instead, it measures a woman's value by how much money she can make, how productive she can be, how selfless she can be, and how beautiful she can look while doing it all. At this point in my life, I honestly didn't feel like I was very productive. I wasn't really making much money, and I certainly didn't look pretty while doing it. Quite frankly, I felt worthless at this point. The biggest part of my rehabilitation was taking off those toxic societal lenses that I was measuring myself through so that I could value my worth more accurately. I was helping a tiny human feel safe as they just entered into this life, which supports them in having a calm nervous system so that when they grow up into a fully formed human, they can go out into society and contribute productively from a place of wholeness. With that new lens, I could see that not only what I was doing was valuable, but it was important necessary and beautiful. With that new lens, after going through that transformation, I can now stand before you today and say on behalf of myself and women all over the world, 
You're welcome. This is really what led me to write my book. I just wanted to help other women have that same transformation and view themselves through that lens. When it came time to go back to work, I decided to focus on building my own business. The current workforce is made by men, for men. And honestly, it just felt like if I went back into that environment, I would be pledging a fraternity that would really never stop hazing me. And so instead, I did my own thing, my own way, and really made it so that it honored the way I operated. I now, today, make 24 times the hourly rate I used to make back then, and I make a full-time income working part-time, because that's how I wanted to do it. Entrepreneurship gave me a space where I could avoid the gender pay gap and do things my way. So I fixed my problem, but it doesn't really fix the problem. And the problem is that society's value system is skewed towards the masculine. How they work, how they lead, how they operate. I don't judge a man's worth based on how many babies he can birth. That would be ridiculous. But we do this to women every day, measuring them through a lens that sets them up to lose. As a result of this skewed value system, women are paid 80 cents on the dollar for every dollar a man makes, and it's even worse for women of color. And if you try to do a workaround by going into business, it's much harder for women to get their ideas funded in business, even though the research says they are actually more trustworthy borrowers. There's a 1.4 trillion gap in credit being loaned to women. The gender pay gap is typically viewed as a woman's issue, but I'm here to tell you today that it is not. Not only is this costing our daughters, but it's also costing our sons. Closing the gender pay gap will increase gross domestic product by nearly 20% across all countries. This unbalanced value system is compromising our country's economic performance, and we need to work in collaboration to fix it. This may feel like a pipe dream, but there was once a time in ancient Egypt when men and women lived together in harmony. They each expressed their unique gifts and talents and appreciated each other equally. Women from Greece would have to travel to Egypt to go to med school. They would attend, and once they graduated, they'd go back to Greece and have to disguise themselves as men in order to practice medicine. It was very common for ancient Egyptian religion to edify the feminine, which is why women were well respected in society. If it happened before, it can happen again. If you are a woman, I invite you to remove the ways that you have disguised yourself to fit into society and operate in a way that honors who you truly are. You are made perfectly and uniquely. If you are a man, I invite you to take off those toxic societal glasses and put a higher value on the women in your life, both personally and professionally. The ways that she is different from you are what actually make her a very strong member of your team. And finally, I invite us all to stop competing and start collaborating so that we can fix the societal issue. There's a great quote by Buckminster Fuller you can never change things by fighting the existing reality. To change things, build a new model that makes the old one obsolete. When I think about that new model, I see that the future is incredibly bright. I see a world with fair compensation. I see a world where women's ideas are financed more often. I see an increase in our global economic performance. I see more support for new mothers. I see a society where the word mansplaining is obsolete, one where my daughter isn't disempowered for being a girl, and where my son isn't threatened by her success because he knows they're on the same team. Thank you.